need to shoot 70% plus from the free throw line. Must be in on all rebounds on the free throw line. In low to the basket. Now hopefully, as a power forward, you also, in this situation, direct traffic. We talked about guards trying to help with this, but again, if you're a power forward and you got a 6'10 guy, you're a 6'10 guy, and they've got a 6'11 guy here, you want to be there. If there's a, your guy's a 6'6, he's here, and that puts your, your other 6'9 guy here, and they've got another 6'9 guy here, you want under here. You want to get this guy over here. You want to help direct that traffic. You've got to know where people are and make sure you got biggies on biggies. It's critical. You got to do that. And that's when you do have to be verbal as a power forward and you do have to open your mouth and you do have to show a little bit of leadership. And you got to before the referee gets ready to hand the ball to the free throw shooter because then it's too late. You got to see it as soon as you're walking out and recognize what's going on. I like for the power forward to be somebody who is a rebounder, who is a very good defender. Um, I like for the power forward. Uh, I think that one of the qualities that I see now, I go and watch some games and I see big guys that are a little bit lazy. Um, they, they tend not to get up and down the floor and, and things like that. Uh, we're looking for big guys that whenever we get the ball, that they're gonna, uh, that they're gonna get down the floor quickly try to beat the other team's big man in transition and, and score that way, score easy baskets. Uh, typically in junior kids, we don't always get uh, real skilled big kids uh, because the division ones are snatching them up and, and they set them out and things like that. So we got to look for ways to create other scoring opportunities for them. One of those ways is, is to for the score in transition. Most power forwards finish the fast break down in lane two. But that is the general rule. There are exceptions. Who's the best power forward of all time at getting ahead of the ball on the fast break? Is there any question? I mean, he sprints. When there's a rebound secured or a steal, he sprints with everything he has, like his money depends on it. It does a little bit to get ahead of the ball. Because he recognizes those are easy points or else they're going to be free throws. If you were to watch, on average, how many points he gets out of just sprinting ahead of the ball to get into an outside lane, I'll bet you that at least 20% of his points come from the fast break. That's a substantial number. And it does pay dividends. You need to be verbal in this scenario as a power forward, you have to let the guards know you're coming. Trail middle, yell it out. You have to let the guards know you're coming. You're going to yell trail middle, let them know you're coming down the road. And by hustling down the court, if a shot goes up early and you're coming down this lane, usually the easiest rebound to get is when you have a running start, isn't it? You can get higher, you get to it quicker, gives you an opportunity to pull up some boards that way. As a power forward in out-of-bounds plays, a lot of times you are a second or third option. This means that you have to constantly be working for position, being able to seal and receive a pass to score. You have to set strong screens. Your number one responsibility is to free people up. And they can't get freed up without a screen being set for them. You have to be nasty. When you take a ball bounds, your team does. You're the four, five's here, the ball's here. And you go to screen this guy, take his man out, and he comes around, 
You have to seal this. That's yours. That's an easy two if you do it right. Perfect example of this is when you are ball side, you screen away from the ball to get the five man freed up. You have to seal that spot from the defensive player, drop yourself down low, close it off, ready to receive a ball for a quick dump in. This is an easy way for power forwards to be able to score additional points in the course of a game. Rule of referees, when you're fighting for a position down here, usually call a foul on the offensive post player or the defensive post player first. Defensive post player. You can get away with a lot of shoving and pushing if you don't flail with your arms down in the blocks. You can get away with a lot. It's amazing. One of your other responsibilities on out bounds plays as a power forward, because you're close to the ball, is to read when things are getting bogged down. You may want to even count in your head 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. You get to 1,004 and you know that your team is not getting the ball in bounds easily, sprint to an open space on the floor, yelling for the ball, help your teammate out, free yourself up, your team gets the ball in bounds. Power forward, I think the name says it right there. He's got to be powerful physically. He's got to be able to withstand the rigors of playing inside. Uh, a lot of times, he's got to be the one maybe get the team going and make sure everybody understands they need to be a physical presence in the game and dictate the pace with his physical presence. They can help to set the physical tone in practices. If you need a defensive stand, when teams need a big basket, they want to get the highest percentage shot they can, where are they going to go? In time to step up and really dig in and put a stop on. Have to do it. If you also feel your team's lagging, try to out hustle the little guys. Because that will make them have to work harder. And finally, know when your team needs a, a couple of rebounds. Sometimes one defensive rebound, a hustle play on the offensive end, somebody else on your team gets a defensive rebound, you come down and get a second offensive rebound, all of a sudden you turn the whole flow of the game around. Have you noticed as we go through these player roles and responsibilities by player position, have you noticed that every player does have different roles, things that they can do, but they also have different opportunities to show leadership. Have you noticed that? That's what's most interesting is most players think he's the captain, he's supposed to take charge. Everybody on the team has opportunity to show leadership in one format or another, and you need to be aware of that. Typically, you're going to be fairly limited to this area. It's called war in the paint. Typically, in a half-court setting, offense and defense, you're going to be fairly limited there. If you go to full court, your area is going to be somewhere in here, typically through here. And sometimes, if you really are a speedster, you're going to be out here. But typically, you're going to be in lane two most of the time, aren't you? Most of the time. If you're really a fast power forward, you're going to get out and fill the lanes. So you have a little bit more opportunity to be in several areas.